Welcome to Genomi Club, brought to you by Genomi Australia. We will be showcasing different genomic machines and accessories to enhance your sewing experience, covering a variety of topics, including quilting, dressmaking, and embroidery, with handy tips and tricks along the way so that you can get the most out of your Genomi machine. For more inspiration, please like and subscribe, or you can check out our website at genomi.com.au. Now let's get creating. This month, we will be looking at the Edge Guide Foot. Now this is a really handy foot that has this plastic sort of guide on the side that is adjustable. So you can use this foot as a ditch foot, a quarter inch foot, or just as a guide foot. It is perfect for when you want to do top stitching along the edge of something. So it may be um, on a seam, it may be putting down ribbons, it may be um, doing little tucks. Um, there are so many uses that you can utilize this foot for. So on the front of the foot, there is one millimeter markings across the front. Let's see if we can hold that at this angle. So it's a normal shank attachment and it does have your SE for um, the edge guide foot. And then it's got these one millimeter increments at the front that when you then rotate this little screw attachment you can adjust that guide so if I adjust that so that it's sitting in the middle position of my foot then this guide acts as a center um, position so like a ditch quilting foot where you've got a guide that runs down the center you can also adjust it um, all the way over say to the left hand side if you want to use it to stitch on binding so I don't know if we have to zoom out a little bit to sort of show so that we can use this foot um, to stitch like on binding um, that's another really good use for it or you can again you can adjust this so uh, together with your needle positions so if you've got a seven mil you've got 71 needle positions nine mil you've got 91 needle positions so you've got such good adjustment that you can adjust your needle position to exactly where it needs to be adjust the guide to where it needs to be and then you have this wonderful nice straight edge here that you can then line and it can either be this side or on this side it doesn't matter which side you line it up um, you've got this lovely guide that sits in front of the needle for you to push your um, the edge of your work up to to do your stitching so let's attach it to our machine and it is a normal shank foot so again we just go onto our shank with a click we then would take what we're going to stitch so say we've got here um, I've got a strip of fabric that um, I've just turned in the raw edges um, which camera are we on this one over here so I've just turned in the raw edges of both of these strips of fabric to make like a double sort of um, ribbon I suppose and then we're going to stitch down a decorative stitch down the edge of it so first up we're going to select our stitch so this one is one of the decorative stitches that has a um, sort of a straight stitch and then a triple stitch so it's in our quilting menu and then we've got this stitch here um, which as I said it does like a triple stitch and then a single and then a triple and then a single we will increase our stitch length up a little bit I am sewing on the Continental M17 so I can either increase my stitch length by my main screen or I also have my stitch length here on my um, smaller center screen as well so then the best way to um, set this in the right position is that you line where you want to sew with your needle position and on the continental I do have my thumb wheel here so I can wind my needle down to get it into exactly the right position that I want to do and then you've got a couple of ways here you can um, put your foot down and then adjust the guide till it sits exactly where you want it go because that way you can or you can adjust the guide beforehand so if you know you definitely want to do your stitch line two millimeters away from the edge of the fabric you could adjust this little guide to the two millimeter um, line 
or you can just do it by eye once you've um, put the foot on. So um, I know we're not zoomed in here, but there's a, like this one blue layer of fabric is sitting on top of my pink. So this guide is sitting right along where that seam the um, two fabrics are meeting and because this fabric is folded over it's got a nice sort of ridge and that edge stitch foot then will guide along there. So this is really good as I said for your top stitching because you've got this guide that the edge will go along you're guaranteed to get perfect straight stitching along the edge of your item. I'm letting my machine do the work. I'm only very lightly touching it to keep guiding that along. And we can cut that off. So we might bring this back over down here. So you can see here, I now have a very consistent um, gap between the edge of where I was stitching and my stitch line. I haven't had to keep sort of adjusting that. I just ran that edge of the fabric here along the guide. So if I bring this foot in, that little guide at the front of the foot is just running along there. And then if I wanted to then attach this to my work, again, you just run that guide along the edge and you've got that perfect placement. So the other thing you can utilize this for is for doing um, pin tucks and things like that that are at different sizes. So um, if you're using just you say your quarter inch foot for doing little tucks, you could, would only really ever have a quarter inch. But with this foot here, I can adjust to um, different widths. So if I wanted to do say a five millimeter, I can take it all the way over to the, my edge and then I know that I've got a five millimeter little pleat that I'm going to do. I've just gridded up a couple of lines on my fabric so I know exactly where to um, fold this. So I'm just going to fold it along that line, put my foot down, then again I'm just checking yes my stitch is exactly going to be, oh I forgot to change my stitch back to a normal straight stitch so let's just go over here. We'll go back to a normal straight stitch and I will increase the stitch length a little bit there. Okay, now we're ready to go. So I've stitched there um, at, it's about five mil or four and a half mil because it's halfway from my nine millimeter um, machine. Obviously, if I wanted to do a larger tuck, I could then move my needle position. So I could move my needle position over all the way, which way are we going? This way, all the way to zero. And then I would have exactly nine millimeters between my needle and the guide. Um, so you've got that fine 1.1 1 .1 millimeter adjustment that you can do. I'm just putting this back to the center again. So you've got both the guide and the needle position to change. We're going to now put this on about two and a half millimeters. So I'm halfway. And then we're going to take our little piece of fabric, fold it along the line, and we can stitch another little pleat here. So in the project you make these um, lots of these little pleats and there's a couple of different sizes that you make and then we're going to stitch a decorative stitch down the center and um, one inch either side of this so what you would do is we then would adjust the guide so that it is running right down the center of our foot so it's going to act more like a ditch foot now we would then select our decorative stitch that we want Let's go in and we'll select a quilting stitch. Let's go with, try and pick the same similar one. So if we're going to be stitching this along, then what it is, is this guide, because it's sitting at the front, will actually push all of these little pleats down in the direction that I'm sewing. So if I wanted them to go in a particular direction, I just would obviously turn this around. So we're going to stitch along here. 
and you can see that as it gets over onto this pleat, the little guide at the front then pushes my um, pleat in the right direction and we would stitch our little decorative stitch. So it does have that nine millimeter opening or seven millimeter opening, depending on what foot you're on, to um, be able to get all those beautiful decorative stitches. That will be enough there. So we've stitched along in that one direction and then you would stitch your other rows in that same direction and then we would come back in. So then if we come back in this opposite direction, again, that guide just pushes everything in the right direction for us. So we don't have to sit there and fold each one of these back as we're sewing. So we would end up with our um, little things. Let's go back over here. So there's a little bit I just stitched, a bit rough and ready here for our video, but this is the bit we prepared earlier. So you can see there that we've done the gold stitching in this direction, and then we've done the pink stitching going in that direction to create this sort of woven little pin tuck um, pleated section. So one of the other things you can use this for is for doing applique. So I've got here just a little square. It doesn't work too well on um, very tight round seams. You can get nice curved seams with this, but I wouldn't be doing little tiny circles with this particular foot. You could, but it's um, there are other feet that are slightly better for that one. But this one here, if we go in and choose an applique stitch, we'll go for this one. We can then again line our guide up with exactly where our needle drop position is. So I'm going to drop my needle down so that it is sitting just off my fabric because this is an applique so I want it to stitch on my fabric and then over onto the applique. I then would adjust my guide out so that it's going to run along the edge of my little piece of fabric here and I can check it with my foot down and then we can stitch around our shape. Once we get to our corner, it's just a matter of turning our um, piece around. I've stitched, um, I just need to do one more stitch to get it back to starting point. There we go. So then when I turn around, my guide then lines up with my work and we stitch around the shape. And you would just continue that as you stitch around. You can do any type of sort of um, stitch that you want on your, um, around your um, uh, applique. Sorry, <laughs> losing my words today. Um, so you could, this is just your standard traditional sort of blanket stitch, but you could do um, like your decorative, other decorative stitches as well. This one here we've done is with a hand look quilting stitch um, that is a function of the Continental Machines. It's where you can take our perfect sewing stitches and then um, give them a little bit of a um, tweak to make them look like you've actually stitched them by hand. So there's all sorts of different decorative stitches that you can choose for this um, with this foot. We might go in, let's find a nice stitch. There's so many stitches to choose from. Sometimes I sort of go trouble picking which one I want to use. Let's use this one here. So this one here has got like a zigzag and then some little dots. If I want to make this a hand look stitch on the Continental 17, I go into my 
um, programming stitch and when it's selected I can then select the hand um, look variation so it, you just have to look in your manual so depending on whether you've got the M7 or M17 that's slightly different ways that we do the hand stitch style but um, that is something that is um, an option so we're just going to go in and add a few more of these so we get a nice sort of variation So we're just giving these all a, um, a bit of a tweak that um, so that it is not that very perfect sort of stitching. We're going to line up this guide with the edge of our work on the two stitch. Find this foot takes um, the um, place of a lot of other feet that you could use, like if you want that ditch guide or whether you want um, the edge guide. So let's just bring this down. This one might be a little bit harder to see. Sorry, I have pink thread on. Um, but you can sort of see here that um, you'll notice if you do have a continental and you're doing that hand look stitching, when you do it, it actually has this sort of bit of a wonkiness to it and you can adjust how wonky it goes and it just does give you that look that some of these, because they're not perfect done on the sewing machine, that it makes it look, as we said, they're called hand look stitches because that's what they look like. So for all those people that love the look of um, the hand, say, you know, cross stitching or hand quilting, you can utilize a lot of the stitches on your machine for that. Okay, the other thing that um, I use this for is even just for um, seaming and for um, doing like top stitching of a seam. So if I had um, two pieces of fabric that I would put right sides together, I can then seam them. This is a fold, but we're just going to imagine that it's two pieces of fabric that we're seaming together. And depending on what your seam is, again, you would adjust your guide and then adjust your needle position if needed. But we're just going to stitch a seam here. use our imagination that that's two pieces of fabric that we've just stitched together but what it is is we've now then got this seam we're going to press it over to one side and we're going to utilize the guide to do perfect top stitching down the seam so I can then adjust my guide to exactly say three millimeters one two three Three. I'm just getting it exactly right. We can then line up the guide with our seam and we can stitch down not quite three millimeters. Let's just get it one more over. And then when I run that again, this seam down the edge of that guide, I am going to get perfect top stitching. So this would be really great if you put a placket on a blouse, you're doing your top stitching on a collar or on your cuffs of um, a sleeve, anything like that. So we'll bring this down and we've got our stitching here which is perfectly distance away from our seam. Might be a little bit tricky to see. Here's our seam here and then we've got our top stitching on top. Now when you want to put um, a ribbon on, I've dropped all my ribbons on the floor, let's pick them all up. Okay, now when you're putting a ribbon on and um, you're wanting to put that down, I do find it easier to move the guide to the left hand side of where I'm going to sew because that way this guide here actually acts as um, like extra holding and holds that um, ribbon in place, whereas if I have this sitting out here what it is is there's not there's there's only this edge of the foot holding my ribbon so that's just a little handy tip for when you're attaching something like a ribbon so 
we get our piece of fabric in. Get our lovely ribbon here. So I've just got a straight stitch at the moment. We'll go down, we'll adjust our guide a little bit so we are in the perfect position. So this is another option for those people who like the ribbon and sequin foot but want to do some wider ribbons that this foot is a really good foot for attaching because it doesn't matter how wide your ribbon is you can um, stitch it down let's stitch the other side so we're going to turn this around Again, this could be decorative stitching or just your straight stitching, anything like that. So we'll bring in our lovely bit of ribbon here. So there we are, our ribbon is stitched on here and it is perfectly spaced stitching on either side because that guide on the foot because it just runs down the edge. You're not just got a flat foot and you're trying to keep it in place. That guide just helps it go along. So I'm gonna show you a couple more examples of when we've used the edge guide foot. So let's just move these ones out of the way. So we've got here a folder cover that we've done. We've used the guide foot to applique these um, little animal faces on. And then we've used the guide foot to also top stitch. This is the flap um, of the folder cover and we've used the foot to um, stitch down. This will be upside down for you, but we've stitched along the edge here. So really good when you're edge stitching on something that's um, been bagged out. And then you can also utilize it with the binding. So when we're stitching our binding along, I'll get it the right way for you. You would be stitching along Oh no, we're upside it's down. Right it's the right way for me. <laughs> Here we go. Now this is the right way for you. Stitch your binding on. And if you want your bulk of your quilt, obviously, or what you're binding on the other side, again, you just adjust this guide and we would stitch down this side. So that way you can have the bulk of your item off the edge of the machine and we get, again, that perfect stitching along the edge. We've also used it here in this little tote bag when we were stitching down our um, strips of fabric that cover the edge of our zipper here and down our little handle strip as well. So this one we adjusted the guide on the foot so we would first of all stitch right on the edge and then so that we would stitch in the centre as well. bring in another project here this one has got a flange binding now there if you want to know how to do the flange binding itself there are um, instructions on some of our previous um, accessories of the month so just have a look through all the other projects and you'll be able to see and there are videos that um, for the last couple of years at least that match most of the accessories of the month um, and they're all available on our YouTube channel. So this one here, I just run the guide down the inside of the binding and that way I can get my top stitch perfectly sitting in that little flange because the stitching actually sits just inside that little bit of the flange but not on the actual bind. So there's my stitching run through there. I'll bring in the project that was this month now. Yeah, here we are. So it's a beautiful little um, wall hanging that has got your pin tucks that with the decorative stitching that run around. We've appliqued all these different ribbons onto it with um, some straight stitching and some decorative stitching. Then we've got this beautiful applique um, that we've put on it. If you, sorry, not applique. Um, embroidery. If you don't have an embroidery machine, you could buy a beautiful panel that you could put in there. And down the bottom, we've done this sort of stacked um, sort of a ribbon effect where we've utilized different stitches on the edges of these ribbons um, to make sort of like a stacked sort of ribbon effect. So some of them are fabric, some are ribbons on there. So that's our lovely project.